So what I'd like to walk you through is how we can go about describing regions in the plane with inequalities. We had a problems plus problem uh, on problem set three where we tried to do a three-dimensional solid uh, in Cartesian or rectangular coordinates and then cylindrical coordinates and then spherical coordinates. And that's going to come up uh, here before too long. But let's take a look at just regions in the plane. And this is going to feel somewhat familiar from when you were doing area calculations in uh, Calc 2. So we have uh, two options for describing regions in the plane. And what do I mean by a region in the plane? Well, so suppose we have some sort of blob and we want to describe what is inside of it. So we could use vertical slices and here's a region that fits well to have a vertical slice. What we're noticing is that we've always got the same curve down below and the same curve up above, and the left and right sides are just straight lines, vertical lines. And so what we're thinking is we've got slices have constant 1 less equal x less equal constant 2. So we're saying that there's one of these red slices for every value of x from constant 1 over to constant 2, from c1 to c2. And then along a slice, we're thinking that y varies from this lower function f1 of x, so y is greater or equal f1 of x, up to y being less equal to f2 of x. And so we just move right along there. And that, as long as we have some sort of algebraic expression for f1 and f2, that works. What's really important here is c1 and c2 are constants. Okay, We need to, if we say slices have, I should say slices, not slides, slices have c1 less equal x less equal c2, and then the limits on y, the along a slice variable, they may be constants or they may, be, they may include uh, x in one or both. Uh, typically, they'll include x in one or both of them, but they could be constant, as we'll see in an example. The other thing we could do is we could do horizontal slices. And so this would be a region that maybe looks like this, where we see if we do horizontal slices like that red line segment, they're always starting at the parabola and ending at the straight line. And there is a slice, so they start at the parabola g1 of y, and they end at the line g2 of y. And there is one of these slices for every value of y from the constant d1 up to the constant d2. And so we have slices have d1 less equal y less equal d2. Again, constants there. And then x is between g1 of y and g2 of y, and those might be constant functions g1 of y equals 3 is still a function of y. Okay, let's put this into practice. So let's look at this region. This is the region in the first quadrant below the line y equals 2 minus x. And so let's do a vertical slice like this. So we think, okay, slices have, well, where could we put a slice? To stay within the region, we can have a vertical slice all the way at the left at x equals 0 or all the way over to the right at x equals 2, but for no other values of x. Now, along a slice, what do the y values range from? Well, for every single slice, the bottom end of the slice is the constant 0. The top end of the slice, however, depends on where the slice is. Way over at the left, the top end of the slice is 2. As we get further over, it gets lower and lower and way over at the right end of that triangular region. The top end is actually 0. But everywhere along there, it's really 2 minus x tells you the top end of the slice. Again, the lower bound is constant since every slice starts at the same position. The upper bound varies depending on where the slice is. Now let's take a look. This region works just as well with horizontal region, uh, horizontal slices. And here you get a slice for every value of y between 0 and 2. And along a slice, y starts at 0 for, or x starts at 0 for all of them. Now what is that upper limit? Well, we want to have x expressed as a function of y. So we need to rearrange the equation of our line 
get x is 2 minus y. So that says along a slice, x goes from 0 up to 2 minus y. All right, now here's a region that requires a little bit of thought. We might be tempted to try horizontal slices, but notice what happens here. We wind up with different bounds based on where the slice is. In the lower part, the left bound is one of these slanting lines, and the right bound is another slanting line. As we get further up, though, the right bound becomes the vertical line x equals 1, and so there would be a change in what bounds. And so we try not to do this if we don't have to, and we'll talk more about this later in the week. So let's try vertical slices here. They seem to be more promising. Oh, yes. Okay, so slices have, we get a slice for every value of x between 0 and 1. Right, we see our shaded region runs from x is 0 to x is 1. And along a slice, what happens with our y values? Well, every slice's lower bound is y equals x, so we start at x, and every slice's upper bound is y equals 3x, so we need to stop at y equals 3x. All right, our final example is of this uh, upper half of the, uh, of the disk uh, of radius 1, so the region that's shaded at, in the picture there, um, I'm going to choose to use horizontal slices. So we need slices have, and then we think about what happens with y. y starts at 0 and goes up to 1 as we look at this picture. Now what happens with x? Right, so that's along a slice. We're going to have some bounds on x. Well, we need to describe this circle more carefully. We need x in terms of y, and remember, you take that, try to solve and you take the square root. The positive square root gives you the right half. The negative square root actually gives you the left semicircle uh, here, and so that leads us towards the limits on our slices. We go from minus the square root of 1 minus y squared up to the square root of 1 minus y squared, and for you to think about, and I'm going to ask you about this in these questions on Sakai, Here's your task. Do this, describe this region with vertical slices. Right. So these will, uh, okay. Thanks for listening.